Is it happening? Yep, there we are. Oye, oye. Or oye ve for those who are. Uh, it's a good way to start. Uh, okay. <laughs> What? Pat's cherry. She is. Yeah. Pat is a little confused. Sure. Yeah. You can help. You can help. You can your own way. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I need to. It's cost so it's not that Okay. Uh, we're going to get started and we start with an agenda review. Does everybody have the agenda? We, we did have some uh, confusion with Judy, she put everything on the web, and I guess that is now the practice. In other words, she put the packet on the web with the assumption that we would all download it and print it out. So we don't have hard copies of that, although we can run out and make hard copies as needed. And there is an agenda in hard copy right there. Does anyone need that? There's a hard copy up here? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you can just come in and have one put this into the table. Yeah. Um, well, that is. And this might be an opportunity to remind people of the somewhat. Um, somewhat um, useful awareness of our scheduling. So, for, for the purpose of public records, we put an announcement that the meeting's going to happen in the Yellow Springs paper, right? So that's the Thursday before this meeting, which means that. Judy has to, if we want an agenda in the paper, which is the best way to do it, Judy has to have that the Monday before the Thursday. So that would have been the Monday before the, the, Monday yeah. before the Thursday before or Tuesday. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. So if you want to be sure that you're putting something on the agenda for the public to know about, which is a good idea, then it has to go to where just pulling all that together. Um, on that Monday morning, no later than, because that's the Yellow Springs deadline. And then the package, uh, Judy puts that together and puts it on the web, and in the past she's made hard copies, but for some reason didn't do that tonight. Um, that has to get to her the Thursday before our meeting, right? So if you have something to hand out, and in terms of public records, it's best to get it in the packet so that everybody can get it. So it's Thursday before? So the that's, newspaper comes out on Thursday. Yeah. Well, no, now we're talking about the packet. The packet, yeah. The, the number, number, not the minutes. newspaper, but the packet. The packet, the minutes, for yeah. example, yeah. should be in the packet. Yeah. And so they need to go, the and there's a person who's pulled, like it's this time it was me, and it's different people, but somebody should pull it all together and give it to Judy on Thursday. And then everything that's happening at this meeting. Thursday before the meeting. Before the meeting. And then she creates the packet and she puts it on the web on Friday or Saturday or whatever. Um, any questions about that? Because I think we've all, and I'm including myself in this, we've had a little drift of not getting things in the packet, which is not kosher to follow our theme. <laughs> you think we can continue that for the time? I don't know if we can do it all the way to the meeting. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's that. Um, and we have we have an agenda with timelines, and we have a, a, our structure of when citizens can come in and how they can come in, which means it's helpful to have a timekeeper. So if we have a volunteer timekeeper. I can do it. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, agenda review, looking at the agenda, do people, for a minute, do people see something they'd like to uh, add to it? Um, I wondered if we wanted to talk about the idea of a public forum because our little committee had a suggestion. So, I don't know if that, we could do that under a report or. Yeah. Or that was one of our goals. Right, right. Okay. Um, and then, and then I, I wanted to, uh, you know, talk about the, the issue that um, 
Can I just the letter that, that, that I put that was included in okay. Does that make sure sense to have that, that as yeah. part of the sure one review? Of us? Yeah. Oh. 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 Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can sit where you want, but the rest of us. <laughs> can we do that as part of the review of the vote? Or does it have to be a separate? Where is this going under? Um. Can we bring it up there? Sure. Okay. So, 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 Okay, and then approving the minutes. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the March minutes? Would everyone have a chance to read the March minutes? Yeah. So moved. Second. Um, vote approve. I approve. Aye. Aye. Um, one thing about the minutes, I'll just refer to this as we um, go to the vote on recommendation one from the mayor's court group. We um, already voted, you may remember, on the mayor's court group. However, um, Al did a nice job of capturing this issue. Um, before the vote, the recommendation and the resolution were modified. Everybody remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, we have the modified in the packet. Um, it was also pointed out by committee procedures that the resolution would have to be publicized, the notice and comment, which was in the paper, this committee saw in the paper, um, and that we would uh, look at that and then have yet another vote. And then three more papers? Sorry? And then put it in the paper three more times? No, no, no. No, I don't want to do this. No, I think we ought to do this. Look, we've got public here. Who cares? I just wanted to mention, too, that the, it was posted in the police department, uh, yeah, you know, asking for if they had a notice. We didn't hear anything. Al, could you make sure you make a note of that? The notice and comment was in the police department, was posted in the police department, as well as in the Yellow Springs paper. Okay, so, um, and then this is the point at which we get any updates, if any, to it. Uh, Beth has been officially appointed. Uh, Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> uh, Florence Randolph, who is our outreach, uh, I should give up the title. Right. Coordinator, yeah, outreach coordinator, is in orientation right now. Sounds like nice. she's finding it very interesting and I'm glad to be there. Do you think maybe we could ask, uh, maybe she would come and meet with us at some point in the future? Yeah. I mean, not to impose on her too much, but it'd be great yeah, to get to know her. Yes, you know, absolutely. Something. I think that's a great idea. She probably needs some time. Yeah, I was going to say, she <laughs> might want to maybe, maybe, a, maybe in a couple months. Yeah, right. <laughs> future thing. Seems good. Um, I ran into Ann Portinga, who is the mayor's uh, clerk, and the mayor uh, admired her decor <laughs> in her office. But anyway, um, and Anne is going to help uh, starting the first of the year, I just asked her if she could, you know, get us information about the citations, the number of cit the citations, what comes here, you know, kind of descriptive, and what the, um, the outcomes are, you know, what kind of fines or whatever. And then um, uh, she's also going to seek that information from Green County. And um, the uh, chief, uh, we just uh, okayed monies for body cams for all of our police officers. And then the other thing, and I'm sorry, I meant to call uh, you guys, but just wanted to be clear uh, with Al and Dave, um, if, they're, if the full body is here because you're alternates, I talked to Mary Ann because we, you know, we appointed you as alternates. Um, but we didn't say who's first and who's second. So if, the, if there are people missing, you vote. If there are people missing, you know, you're part of the group, but you don't vote. And then I just, we just thought if you would take turns if there's somebody missing, if there's only one person missing, that you take turns <coughs> being the voting member. Does that, sound, does that sound okay? Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Okay, now this is the point where uh, we invites us and concerns anyone who has a concern that is not on our agenda and would like to bring that forward. Do it first. <laughs> and it's 
minutes. Yeah, I'll tell them. Um, Could you state your name? Yeah, Canada Lee Um I, uh, I've, I've followed this uh, subject uh, for a while back. I, uh, Sorry, which subject? The subject of policing. Oh. Uh, and uh, good policy and um, the thing that uh, policing is supposed to do um, is to enforce law in the interest of justice and this body has a very special mission um, I, I, um, I appreciate your work um, uh, but I wanted to say something about specifically about um, the uh, Citizen Review Board, uh, and that um, I haven't really heard a whole lot of discussion about that, and it was my expectation based on uh, following the hearings after the New Year's Eve uh, incident, that uh, that would come, come about, and that we would have uh, uh, some kind of transparent processing of uh, in information uh, about what, what the police department is actually doing. Obviously a training thing, there's the mayor's court thing. There's a lot of pieces to this. Um, but it, it strikes me that, um, uh, as one notable citizen wrote, if we're going to kill the game, uh, we need a, a, an aggressive approach to this. And what I'm asking is, basically um, for two things. Uh, one of which is a, a, a standing committee, a group, a, 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 I guess serving under council of the manager or something, but really answerable to the community, that uh, evaluates policy and performance uh, of officers in the department and has access to as much as the law will allow. Uh, and as much as the function of the police department administration will allow so that they can do their work. Obviously, there's a certain amount of discretion and sensitive information. Um, but I really want that. I want, and that needs to be a permanent thing, not a body like this, which is sort of task-oriented. Um, and that's thing one. Thing two is um, uh, sort of a select committee <laughs> Maybe overlapping, maybe not, but um, a, a group of people responsible for uh, looking at dash cam video and content that is sensitive, that uh, it is uh, subject to certain sorts of legal constraint. In other words, that in order for the, the citizenry to, to get um, deeper into the functioning of, of the police department and how it works and fails to do its job, uh, that there would be this body that would view this dash cam video, and, but then would insulate it, by, uh, 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 would be deputized and, uh, or somehow uh, I, uh, As I say, I guess that there are just legal constraints concerning the, view of, the viewing of this sensitive data. Uh, and my, ex, my notion would be that this would be a special group separate from uh, the, the main group. But I don't know how it needs to be set up. I'm, I'm, I'm disturbed that, um, that there hasn't been more progress. Um, and um, I, I would like those two things. Can you give me um, 30 seconds before my time runs out? Okay. At the end. Yeah. I'd actually really like it if, if it's not too much trouble. If I can actually be on the camera, I don't know, like. You can stand over there. Um, I think I'm on the camera here. And I'm, I'm okay, you can stand over there and be on the camera too. Okay, well, I'd like to address the, the council uh, committee um, task force, if you will. Um, thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak before you guys here today. Uh, means a lot to me. I haven't been here since January. January, um, I remember the group 
sort of uh, turned to me and empowered me really to go out and get interviews of people that have had uh, experiences with the police. And so I have actually gone into the community, created a, a, a community group um, along, I mean, not that I've created it, but you know, I've, I've really you know, taken that empowerment and, and a group has, has formed and um, we're, we're in, in, the, in the works of, of um, pursuing that process of, of getting people's feedback about what's worked with their interactions with the police and what hasn't worked and how can we improve um, police practices based on, on those uh, findings. So um, I, I will keep you guys updated as, as that progresses. Um, uh, the main people interested in it uh, happen to be victims of police misconduct uh, in Yellow Springs and so the group is currently calling itself the Yellow Springs uh, Police Victims Advocacy Group. And um, also at that last meeting that I attended in January, I was told that um, it would be put on the agenda, discussion of a police review board. Um, now, I understand there, there, may has, there has been some talk of a police review board um, there, uh, and, and I'd like to hear more about what's, what's actually happened with that. Um, but I've also heard that within that discussion, um, a real concern about uh, money, how, how does it get financed? And certainly that needs to be part of the discussion, how do we pay for it? Um, How far am I in? Three. Huh? Three. Oh. Okay, that's three minutes right there. Yeah. Oh. But you want the 30 seconds, right? So that I have 30 more seconds? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's just this idea of like, you know, um, deferred maintenance. We talk about it when we, when we speak about buildings, you know, and it's really the same thing. If we're not willing to do the maintenance, do the work, um, you know, that the costs add up. and you know, my, my, the experience that I've already shared about, what happened to me, police, you know, had a guy they were using to bust people for drugs, asked me to wear a wire. This guy abused me when I was a child. They, he abused five other kids, four, four or five other kids in the community I can name, but I won't. And it really, really destroyed people's lives. You know, really, really hurt people in, in deep, deep ways. And these are, these are choices that people made, you know, here in the city, the Yellow Springs Village. And, you know, we can't just keep kicking the, the can down the road. We actually have to invest in the maintenance of the, the, the structures of police accountability now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Are there any other citizens who wish to... Um, in terms of quick response, I mean, we, have a, we don't have time for a lot of discussion, but I would say that... Um, uh, well, a couple of things. One, in terms of Ken's uh, interest in um, uh, video and interviews and so on, there is a newly formed working group looking at surveillance issues, and there are a lot of there's a lot of uh, writing out there about you know is that a public record, for example? But if it's something sensitive, as you mentioned, then could it is it still a public record? So I think that that is an up. Everyone is interested in that. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, there's no promises, and not, don't know where it's going to go. We, I don't even think we have a policy yet about the cameras. Maybe we do that. Um, we'll talk about it. In our okay, you'll talk yeah. about it in your group. So there is some interest in that. As far as the citizen review, <coughs> that is part of the research that we've been doing uh, about what would a permanent um, citizen group look like, and a piece of that is the is the many complicated issues about um, review of police uh, infractions. But those are personnel issues, those are legal issues, so it's quite complicated. But um, Dayton, some of the bigger cities have done a great job with it, but how we handle that on our scale is still something we're researching. So that's still going on. Thank you. Thank you both for that. Does anyone else want to add anything to that, Julie? I just wanted to say when we talked about, uh, when council talked about goals, I brought this up as, uh, it was not one of the... From which one? 
uh, this idea of a citizen review board or looking into it, looking into it. And um, council basically uh, said, you know, that the, the kind of research that's being done around these different kind of boards that it should be included under that. So and oh. that's already what you were doing. Right. It's already so they didn't they didn't actually put the actual wording of any particular kind of you know, different kinds of board. You know, please. Well, thank you for your concerns. Okay, um, going back to the, um, well, let's look first at the citizen comment that came in from our notice and comment. And we have a, uh, an email sent by Larry Turin, which, in which he expressed, I'll just read it, it's very short. I favor and adopt, adopting a policy requiring the use of the Yellow Springs Mayor's Court for all misdemeanor cases occurring in the village unless otherwise required to be charged elsewhere under state or federal law. And he says a little bit about why that's important, but he basically is supportive. And we did not hear any comments back from the police department, although in a meeting with sergeants, they did say that there is this already huge increase, and they're very happy about that, but they didn't respond to the policy change. Um, so we've already voted on it. Now we've heard the notice and comment. So I assume that what we need to do is uh, vote, revote on the amended, um, edited. Um, it's a recommendation, but it's in the form of a resolution. Has everybody seen that? Mm -hmm. Which is, of course, a question about are we giving the council a resolution or a recommendation? But um, oh, Pat, I noticed that the mayor's here. Sorry. The mayor is here. I'm just wondering if, if she wants to, uh, you know, comment on, on this proposal at all. Well, she had her chance. No, <laughs> <laughs> but we did invite her to come. <laughs> to, uh, to comment on something that was not on later on the agenda. That's later on the agenda. Correct. Correct. This particular <laughs> recommendation you're familiar with, or you? Was that the proposed recommendation? This is the proposed recommendation number one. And right now, it's in the form of a resolution. Well, I'll clarify. It's yeah. it's recommendation for action. There are different ways it could happen. One of which, at council's choice, would be to pass a resolution. Okay. I mean, I think it's a personnel matter. Myself, the chief could just issue an order that right. it should all be charged. The village manager could, or council could pass the resolution. Is everyone comfortable with it, or do you want to read it? We could read it again. David, David knows it by heart. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, then we just have to vote on it. Someone I'm, I'm sorry? And, yeah. Um, is there any other discussion? Yeah. Any other discussion yeah. on this? Point of order. So we are at review of proposed mayor's court recommendation yes. to council. So we are going to review it. And then there will be discussion. No, it's been reviewed. It's been voted on, actually. Oh. What we're voting on now is the, I guess you'd say, edited version that came from some comments from the last and oh. this was what was in I, this was you like to have it read yeah. you why don't you does not someone want to read this I'll read it I'll read, I'll read it, it. you read it <laughs> and I'm going to read it fast I'm going to read it at a lawyer's pace read it like Judy reads <laughs> Council of the Village of Yale Springs Yale Springs okay. oh well this is the resolution that would go with it Here's the recommendation. Well, the whole, uh, well, here's the summary of the recommendation that was published. Okay. Yeah, I saw this. You know, the know whole recommendation. Okay. Well, I mean, and I think it's good to do this because we're not sure which thing is being given to the, to the, to the council. So. Well, the whole recommendation would be because I. The whole I, thing? Yeah, because you made comments at your 312 meeting and then I adjusted for those adjust. comments, then that went to you. That's in your packet now, and the summary was what was published in the paper. Oh. <coughs> so the recommendation, um, there's a statement of need. Does anybody want me to read that? No, no. Yeah, read the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm reading the whole thing. All right. Recommendation number one. Statement of need to use Mayor's Court to the fullest extent possible. Now, many village misdemeanor cases are being handled by the Zenia Municipal Court. Why is this change needed? Number one, 
Yale Springs police officers are citing misdemeanor cases to see municipal court rather than mayor, YS mayor's court. One estimate is that two-thirds of our cases go directly to Xenia for disposition. While some misdemeanor cases are required to go to Xenia Municipal Court, these are exceptions per state law. Accused persons, especially village residents, are not getting the opportunity to have their misdemeanor case heard by the judge they elected, the mayor. Number two, persons appearing in mayor's court have a choice regarding how the case proceeds. If they accept the mayor's ruling, it stands. If they think it is not fair or not correct under the law, the person can appeal to Xenia Municipal Court. Also, if a person wants a jury trial, they can choose to have that case removed to Xenia Municipal Court. When the police charge cases directly to Xenia Municipal Court, these choices are not available to the accused. Number three, Yellow Springs taxpayers pay about $56,000 a year for mayor's court. It currently handles about 250 cases a year. In the past, the volume has been much higher when more cases were charged by YSPD to mayor's court. YS taxpayers would get the full benefit of their tax dollars if YS mayor's court handled more cases. Number four, YS citizens want to dispense justice in a way that seeks to change behavior in a less punitive, less burdensome, more restorative manner than some perceive to be administered at the county level. This can occur only if cases come to mayor's court. So um, I think we, we went through all that at our last meeting. That was so the actual recommendation is that the village manager is asked to work with the chief of police to ensure that all misdemeanors can be charged to mayor's court unless the jurisdiction is placed in another court by law. Isn't that the basic recommendation? Um, so the um, so on March so how the change will occur is how you said or the council can direct I mean I can skip through I know you yeah, we, we already right. gone so the recommendation on March 12th, I'm reading the whole recommendation. So the bottom line recommendation, on March 12, 2018, the Justice System Task Force voted to recommend to council that it pass a resolution regarding the village's charging policy. The resolution directs the village manager and chief of police to make the change just described. Okay, okay, so. Uh, I'm sorry, but, um, I mean, not that we didn't vote in favor of the recommendation, but we did. That was it. Because we did, of course, but we. It's just that, of course, we didn't like recommend it to council yet, as as you know, we hadn't gone through the notice and comment process. Just to make that distinction clear, but this is the second vote. Just like you vote to pass the legislation, but then like you pass the legislation in the second vote. You know what I'm saying? We voted for the recommendation. Like we voted we for the recommendation, but we didn't like make the recommendation. Here, here, okay, and it lets to keep order. How about right. if you raise your hand if you okay. want to speak, please? Sorry. Thank you. So we have voted, and it was amended, and um, I think there's still a little bit, and maybe the mayor's court committee, working committee, can figure out what of this paper is actually going to be taken to council. Right. Well, well I, would, I was going to say, um, I mean, I think we should read this. I think we should, any further discussion should happen now. So I don't think we should just go straight to the vote. I think we need to have a little more discussion. But we've um, already voted. We have voted. I know, but yeah. we're gathering more information. And even though we only got one comment, um, I don't know about anybody else, but I've been thinking about this and I've been talking to some people. And so I wanted to say in terms of why is this change needed, my, uh, I just wanted to say, you know, if we were going to include this, um, this notion that two-thirds of our cases go directly to senior for disposition doesn't sound like it's any longer true. And so we definitely don't want to be, in our recommendation, having information that's not accurate. So I don't know what is accurate exactly, but it sounds like it's a lot better than that. And so I, I want to make sure what's in our recommendation is accurate. So that's one thing I noticed when I read through it. I mean, it's uh, I appreciate the information in it and that the basic concept I support it but I just want to make sure that piece of information is accurate so that's one thing so can I um, so as part of this discussion there was a request to the data analysis group uh, to see if we could provide some information and so we did our best I've got some numbers here uh, which I'll pass out I don't think they 
really um, have an impact on the substance of, of this, but I do think it's um, worth looking at. Uh, I think one of the things that you're going to see is the, this is based on the um, electronic database that the YSPD has provided to John, which contains all the citations and all the warnings issued by the police from 2010 to uh, the end of 2017. And if you look at the spreadsheet, um, it's got a lot of information, and the information is fairly complete, except for the column that that's, uh, indicates where the police are sending the case. And almost 40% of the, uh, the cases entered are blank. So I'm not sure where your information is coming from about the two-thirds, and um, we have different sources of information. But this, based on the spreadsheet, this is what we came up with, so I just want to share that with all of you. And this is 2010 through 2017? Yes. That's all. David. The data that we used initially before including 2017 came from the Zini Municipal Court and the Mayor's Court when Dave Corbett was mayor, compiled in 2016-2017. You, Steve, and one or two other people, maybe Hal, met with him to get it, to talk to him, and I also had a, you know, heard him talk about this and, you know, and saw the same data. So that's where the data comes uh -huh. from. But, and whether it's two-thirds or 47 percent or 29 percent, I would suggest doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Having an accurate fine, saying too many is probably a better way to put it so we don't have to battle over whether it's 39 or 37 percent. Um, so there. Another thing I wonder is what do you want us, you and council, what do you want from us? A, a resolution text? I so think you it's can, fine that you can argue that and, and then, vote on, or a recommendation so that you can come up with a resolution text? I personally feel, since the work has been done, but submit, we can submit it all, and then council can decide do they want it. You know, usually staff write our resolutions. Um, sometimes council could have input or something like that, you know, with some particular language. Mm -hmm. But um, so I think the work's been done, we should just submit those. And, that was a specific question about this and the yeah. general question and the about future, the future. In the future, yeah. Um, well, let's not go to the future yet. Let's, yeah. let's do it. I can this. find out. Hard, but we need fine. to know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is there any further discussion on um, this particular recommendation going to council? Which is basically, in summary, that misdemeanors will now be charged to mayor's court. Um, unless the jurisdiction is required by another court. Okay. Yeah, John. Okay, uh, so for some house cleaning, uh, of course it's in order that we move the recommendation before we discuss it, and so I'll just move the entire text of the uh, recommendation, including the why is this change needed, all the way down to, and the second way that this um, Michelle be resolved is through um, passing a, uh, the council will pass a resolution stating that it is village policy that all cases that can legally go to mayor's court shall be sent to mayor's court, um, with the exclusion, of course, of the frequently asked questions. Um, and of course, Pam is correct that this period, now that this motion is moved, is the correct uh, place to comment on it, that it is on the agenda. And that it is, of course, as we've stated, our policy that citizens can comment. I'm on sorry, can you speak up just a little bit? Oh, I'm sorry. And of course, it is our policy that citizens can comment on items that are on the agenda during the period in which we're discussing them. Thank uh, you for that reminder. So should we do that? Is that what you're saying? You want us? Yeah, and then, and then I have some, I've, okay. I mean, I can, in the floor of the panel, I do have, I, I thought you asked me if I had specific things that I want to raise. Should, should I raise them now or should I raise them after Pam? Okay, so yeah, now, it is, now <laughs> it is time. Now it is time. Now it is time. Okay. Uh, 
I'm here because I saw the, your public notice in the newspaper and I wanted to take advantage of that. I was out of town last week when other things, offers for input were occurring. So in reading this over and in listening to what you said here today, as the new mayor, I want to, I want to just let you know there's a new sheriff in town and there was a, quite a, a, an appropriate line drawn between what's happened the last three decades and with the new, the new administration, if you will, here in the village. I wrote down a few comments that I wanted to share so I wouldn't get too drawn aside. But we realized, we being me, the clerk, the, the folks that I talk to on a daily basis up here, we realize the Village Justice Task Force is extremely important not only to our community, but to the mayor's court, uh, where it is obviously we hold a strategic position within your charge. There are many individuals on the mayor's, dealing with the mayor's court now who are new to our position and the sundry positions. For instance, I'm new, chief of police is new, the clerk is new, we have our new community outreach specialist, and it's like this fomenting of all this energy in a very positive way. And as a, as a general rule, though, we need to remember that individuals in new positions fall into this learning curve not only about their position, but the potentials within their position, which is what I am particularly interested in pursuing. For example, the mayor's office just began coordinating resources last week with our new community outreach specialist. And this holds real promise for what we can do here in offering to the folks that come before the court to the folks that, that uh, are seeking resolution with issues they have in the village and so forth. I do think the new community outreach specialist will be a real boon to our village. I also recently met with the Green County prosecutor because I wanted to know him. I wanted to sense his vibe, if you will. I wanted to uh, have a discussion with him primarily to see about collaboration on resources and what we could do together. Our meeting was very, very positive. So I was encouraged about that. Included in that collaboration with uh, the, one of the prosecutors from Xenia was a request for data regarding judgment entries and fines for Yellow Springs cases now being heard in Xenia Municipal Court. The chief recently told me out of I think what he was showing me was cases from the beginning of the year coming to Mayor's Court, approximately 29 cases. Out of those cases, three, if not f maybe four, went to Xenia. So I want to assure you that when I heard many cases, two-thirds go there, that that's, to my knowledge, not true. That number has vastly decreased. Now, when we start talking about all misdemeanor cases, from misdemeanor ones down through minor misdemeanors coming to Mayor's Court, we're talking about the necessity to add personnel to our court, increasing personnel costs, growing our bureaucracy, costs for additional services. What the Mayor's Court and her staff would like to do at this point is to utilize some and learn more about some of our current community-based local resources that fit the structures and needs within our community. I'll confess to you I'm a penny pitcher and I'm watching the, the mayor's court budget very carefully. So to add the cost of even a, a part-time, let's call it a prosecutor for lack of a better word, if you have a prosecutor for some of these M1 cases you obviously will need a defense attorney, etc. So we're talking about really increasing the, the cost of operations here for the village. And I know there is there was some issue with, well, maybe we could get the necessary people from the Greene County Court, and it, I'm learning it doesn't work that way, that we'd be responsible for funding these people ourselves. Um, so, bottom line, the mayor's court and personnel is still, and, and the chief, and the new resource person, we're still discovering how our local resources can 
could best be utilized in our community. If I could request anything, I guess I'm requesting, I, I don't want to say additional time because I don't want things kicked down the road. But I'm saying, be, be careful in saying we must have the chief demand that the, all cases, all cases be required to go to mayor's court simply because we're biting off a lot that we may not be prepared to handle right now. Maybe, I'm three months into my term. My clerk, who's extremely savvy and very helpful, is one month into her term. The chief is what? He's been here a bit longer. Florence is new. So we're dealing with a lot of folks trying to craft after listening, what's what's best for our village? So I, and maybe I'm too late to the, the party, but to say we require the use of mayor's courts for all misdemeanors. If we could just replace one word and say most misdemeanors, as you're aware, there are several types. They can't come before the mayor's court. Um, but at any rate, this 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 is what I just wanted to leave with you that the mayor's court requests. I don't want to say additional time, but just a, a caution in making their final recommendation so that we can gather as much information as possible. Yeah, thanks very much, Pam. So I think what we've heard is that um, as newly appointed mayor, there's some um, concern that things might move too fast in terms of staff catching up. Are there any um, responses to that? Well, I mean, I completely respect what Pam's saying. It was, can, you, can everyone speak well, up for yeah, my I mean, math, please? I, I respect what Pam's saying. I, I under, it makes sense to me. Um, I'm not hearing you say that you don't want that to happen. I'm hearing you say that you, you need some time to get up and running. Uh, and then you would probably welcome that happening. So I'm, and I feel at some disadvantage because I didn't print out my packet. I, I got spoiled. I expected to come and find them printed, you know. So I'm just wondering. And without having it in front of me, it's hard to know whether there's a word or two that we could tweak that would accommodate Pam's concerns and still go forward. Because I don't want to see all this work go for naught. You know, that right. doesn't make any sense. And, and I'll remind us again that we have already voted on this, but you did go ahead. More than I was, once. I was going to say I would recommend that we change the language um, in some way to say to be implemented in the next three to six months. I mean, that we, so that there is time to transition. I mean, it, I, it occurred, this occurred to me a while ago, and I was thinking there may need, need to be some time to transition it, but rather than just making it most, which then still leaves the discretionary piece in place, um, that we have some kind of a notion that gives police off, the police department time to prepare, gives you time to prepare. Uh, so I'm not quite sure how to change, put that language in there. Um, can we leave it to the committee to do that? Council could do that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we'll leave it to the committee to do that. And are we still... That, how does that sound to the... I think we That need... sounds much better. Okay. Thanks. Okay, okay. so, um, and are we... What is our intention about when we're bringing this to council? After we vote for it. Well, when anything gets on the, on the agenda of council, you know, we need to let uh, Brian Hausch uh, to know, and uh, he will fit it onto the next the next agenda. I'd let them know we might have a recommendation for the next meeting. Okay, so again, the committee will do this task. Is that when is the next meeting? And I'm just trying to think when's the next council meeting. It may have it's, it's, it's next Monday, so it would be the first meeting in May. For two. And what day is that? May 7th, I, I would imagine it. Is there any further discussion, or can we go forward with the vote, John? Yes. Um, so, uh, back in March, um, I asked the mayor's court um, subcommittee at the time, which I believe was simply El Schluter and David Turner. Um, Basically, I, I talked to the chief and was asserting that there was a difference of opinion between the mayor's court. Um, and subcommittee and the chief of the police on this recommendation, um, to which David Turner informed me. recommendation? The recommendation that... The one we're talking about or a different one? Uh, 
Effectively, okay, the recommendation, as I was characterizing it, was that um, all, uh, all cases be sent to mayor's court that legally could be heard there. Right. Um, and then the recommend, and uh, he informed me that no, in fact, there was no difference of opinion. And then the recommendation that was brought at the subsequent meeting uh, was not the sort of binding resolution that, that this recommendation is. It would actually take officer's discretion away. Um, so I don't know. So my starting question here, uh, which I have other things I'm going to say, so I don't just immediately answer, is whether you guys had con consulted with the chief um, since that, I think, fairly substantive shift from sort of like, let's ask counsel to kind of like ask the police to like try to throw more cases to mayor's court versus the current recommendation, which removes police discretion and um, whether you've heard more from the police department. Um, I have been very much hoping that the notice and comment process would um, bring us more feedback from the police department as it did not bring us any <laughs> additional feedback from the police department. Um, there are some things that I've heard from OSP staff that I can just immediately say off the top of my head. I don't have a strong opinion on them, but it will provide some information to the committee and something for the um, mayor's court committee to react to. Um, one is, of course, is that the mayor's court has no uh, probation office, so of course the mayor uh, cannot order people to probation. Um, so, you know, is that an issue, um, basically? Uh, the other is um, the issue of arraignment. Um, in the event of an arrest for a misdemeanor offense, my understanding is that the defendant needs to be arraigned in a certain amount of time, but the mayor's court doesn't meet frequently enough to necessarily meet that um, requirement. Oh, you do meet fr frequently. Twice a month, and it's a 30-day requirement. Tom, oh, would, you uh, would you clarify, are you talking about concerns that you think the police department will have? No, that I've heard from YSPD staff. I was hoping that they would just like, be able not, to express but, themselves. Let me point out that they were not communicated. It's their responsibility because yeah. they were Correct. given a notice. I fully them. agree with you. Pat. So we, yeah, I think that we don't okay. need to imagine what they're going to worry about. I mean, I'm I, not imagining, but yeah. I mean, I know we're not, we even <laughs> report their gossip, whatever. I mean, right. I think they I should, you. they need to be able to do that. No oh, yeah. Sure. Well, that was it, really. Trying to figure out what's going to be a problem for them. I don't get that. But, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I agree. I suggest to make the recommendation of the resolution to council and let council decide what to do with it and the people that were affected down the road, like the police and you guys are going to have to work it out anyway. We are not making policy, we're recommending things. I don't think we need to work too hard to make it, to jump to the solution for we're everybody right. else before we make a recommendation. Okay. Do we, are we ready to uh, vote on this? <laughs> Can someone make a motion? <laughs> <laughs> with the, amend, with the amended, with the amended uh, timeline, that this recommendation and is being brought timeline? forth. So what's the new text? Should we say three months? Should we say six, six months? Six months. Six months. Yeah, I'd like that we're not making the policy. That well, I don't actually agree with that. Work that out. <laughs> okay, okay, we're recommending policy. Recommendations. Okay. The recommendation, there's a motion that the recommendation will be brought to council and that the uh, mayor's court group will be responsible for bringing it, putting it on the schedule, bringing it to council, and deciding what amount of information is presented to council. No. And are we are we including no. this language about six months in it? Sorry. Yes. So, With the amended so time. Yes. So okay. So the, so we're we're. I'm sorry. There's a proposal to amend, and I know John likes this Robert's rules, which I didn't study. On, I'm sorry. Uh, but so proposal to amend it to add this sort of six month yes. window to Propose implement. Proposed to amend to add the six month window. Is there a second to that? I'd second that. Okay. Does everyone agree to that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now the next motion is that the recommendation with the amended timeline is so what was the brought to amendment? council. Yes. What, was the, what was the tally on the vote for the amendment? Sorry. Dave, Dave wants to actually, he wants to know the numbers on the yeah. amendment. Yeah, we're... One, my big one. What do you mean the numbers? Uh, he, he have to vote. What, what's the... Amendment? If oh. we're going to follow the rules, let's follow the rules. What, well, I haven't heard a second yet. 
on the amendment. I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard. So you called a vote on the amendment? Steve's and he, he was just asking for a Okay, you did say. Steve seconded. All those in favor say aye. Okay, in favor say aye. I'd like to hear the text of what it is that we're voting on read out so that it's specific and clear, not. We're going to make it longer. Three to six right. months, right? To six months. allow. Right, so six months to allow Up the mayor's to court to. Right. For them to adjust the amendment. So the. You want the sentence? The resolution that Laura worked very hard to put together for last time and then modified after we voted on it last time in March yeah. it now has text added to it. It was a very simple resolution. What is the new simple text of the resolution with the time added? Yeah. Well, can we ask the committee to just do that? I mean, can we trust so, the committee to do that? Well, no, no, no he's, he's right. So, um, <laughs> so we, I mean, if we're yeah. going to, because we're, we, we have to vote on some text, not some vague thing. I mean, John. Al although I'm not the person that proposed this amendment, uh, just in the interest of order, um, could I suggest that the text basically um, to be implemented in six months um, be inserted at, as um, this, um, it could occur in two basic ways to be implemented in six months. That's so basically, put to be so it, it basically, put it it basically, it basically amends it and puts it right at the beginning before the description of we will do this through personnel management and we will do this through a resolution passed by council. Okay. Does that so so that it clearly applies to both sections? Right. Does that, that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm really uncomfortable voting on something that doesn't have final wording on it. Yeah, that makes Can sense. I can yeah. I read something to you? Yes. Well, so I'm, I'm taking Can the recommendation. Okay. Yes, you March 12th, and okay, and then I'm, I'm so here's the, the summary. Okay. On March 12th, 2018, the Justice System Task Force voted to recommend to Council that it pass a resolution regarding the village's charging policy. On April 9th, 2018, the Justice System Task Force voted to recommend to Council that this recommendation be implemented within six months. The draft resolution for council's consideration would direct the village manager and the chief of police to make the change described therein, which is to direct that all misdemeanors that can be legally charged are in the mayor's court. Office. So is the resolution enough? is, is to do it. The supporting text is we suggest you do it in some yeah, period of time. I think that. that. I think that. Oh, okay. that we just told our that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't okay, are you now yeah, so, comfortable with it? Yeah. Yes. And I believe that we're at the place of saying, does anyone oppose this? No. I'm sorry, but now I'm confused. Uh, we're asking council to pass this as the main meeting, but that it will be implemented over Okay. Within six months, months. that yeah. language That's is all. added to okay. the uh, okay. under the direction of what they're going to ask the council to. Yeah, that pass. language isn't part of the resolution that right. we're asking okay. to pass. Right. Gotcha. Right. So, so what you pass is not the same thing that Pam's asking for. Yeah. But so I won't say that out loud. Are you opposing? Yeah. Okay, so please note that David is opposed. Okay. Okay. Um, the mayor's court uh, also wanted to consider their next um, recommendation, but I think we've kind of run out of time, and you'll have to do that at the next meeting. I can say two sentences. Sorry? I can say two sentences. Okay, put out two sentences, but we won't have time to discuss it because working That's my dream. <laughs> Go ahead, David. The next two things we're going to, we're going to recommend that this, that's be you know, recommended at the same time, you know, the creating a diversion program, however that works out to be, whatever diversion means and whatnot, is not the point now. And enable indigents to have a public defender. Whatever the definition of indigent is can be worked out later. Those are the two next things we want to recommend. And Laura has worked her tail off putting a whole bunch of stuff together for that. That's it. So that material that uh, Laura did, I think, could be useful. Should we make sure that goes to everyone for looking at that before our next meeting? Does yes. that make sense? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. As is, unless you yeah. want to change and it's, anything. It's labeled discussion draft. Yeah, it says discussion, discussion draft, draft at the top, so I'll yeah. send that to everybody. Can this repeat that second one, diversion program, and what? Enable indigents. <clears throat> Enable indigents to have a public defender in mayor's court. Yeah. Okay. 
has one to take on. Okay, thanks. Obviously, really important work. Laura, very good work. Very much detail and information. Thank you very much. Um, um, and so I think that brings me. I'm passing out this, most of what she's going to. She'll send out so that you have hard copies for the back. And the back is just here. It's recycled, right? We will yeah. also put it in the packet on the rail for the No, it's my wife. And then the A stuff. This is the stuff. And then I guess that's we decided to attend the planning. Um, this is the part where we address my uh, letter that I sent that was included in the packet, uh, which was basically just that you know I thought it was really important that we address this, uh, providing addition defendants um, that are, uh, this case, whose cases are being heard in mayor's court with a public defender as soon as possible. Um, and since these recommendations are delightfully already basically written, the only real thing that I'm asking the committee to do is to state that this to my ask here is that we deal with that recommendation, which is currently numbered number three, before we deal with the recommendation basically to create a diversion program. Um, hire, pros hire someone to exercise prosecutorial discretion, etc. So the next thing that we would, we would put basically at the top of our agenda next meeting discussing how we're going to provide indigent defendants in mayor's court with public defender. Okay, um, other people on that working group, is that something you are willing to? I think we do them both at the same time, I don't care. You don't care. But you can't do them both of them. You literally have to do one. Okay. 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 But John, uh, I it's going to take six this months. Is in, this is in the packet, which is on the web if you haven't printed it out, in which he makes his case why this is an important thing for indigent rights and why it needs to be part of the converse, next conversation we have. Any further discussion? I think everyone agrees with you, John. Thank you for that. Reminder. Okay, uh, we are moving on to working group reports, and um, I'm going to give a brief report on this. What I think, I hope, is our final um, summary, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing because we did it at the last meeting. But after meeting with Sergeant uh, Knapp and Sergeant Watson, there are a couple things I want to point out that are kind of like more like updates. Uh, so the first update would be on um, page two, which is that uh, the department has updated their field training requirements for all new hires. Previously, if, if uh, officer, uh, let's say Officer Holly, what had, a, had worked in another department or another part of law enforcement, they didn't need to go through the Yellow Springs training. So, and that was a number of officers who did not get the training. So, this has been an initiative of um, Chief Carlson. I think it's a great one that no matter what, when you're hired, you go through the Yellow Springs field training. And that's especially important for TASER protocols and TASER policy. So, that's, that's great. Um, the second thing on page three that's an update is uh, at some point in time, after there were a lot of terrible things happening, mostly killing of unarmed black men in Ohio, but other things, crises. Um, there was a program that went through the Attorney General's office and some other places that the officers, all officers in Ohio, would go through uh, that list that's in the middle there, trauma-informed placing, application of force, et cetera, et cetera. And they paid for it, but they ran out of money for 2018, so now they're not paying for any training. So that's one reason why this online vendor training, Lexipo, is a good solution to the issue that they don't have any money for training. And actually, the training that goes through Lexipo is better than, I'm just making a judgment, personal judgment here, uh, better than uh, OPADA in that it provides scenario-based training. So every month, each officer in Yellow Springs gets emails, up to 10 a month, actually, which I thought was sort of excessive. But anyway, they, see a, they read a scenario which relates to a policy, and then they're asked to take a test about did the person do the right, did the officer do the right thing, did they apply the right policy, and so on. So they're getting this kind of ongoing training that is related to policy and that is scenario-based. 
So that's, I think, an improvement, actually, in your policy. Because uh, a lot of the OPATO training was um, an online lecture, which would definitely help you go to sleep. So that's, that's a good thing, I think. Um, OK, the next issue in turn, this is more connected to our committee, the implicit bias training, which is still problematic in the sense of trying to find something that works, or why does it work, or how does it work, and the fact that the police, their training has to be connected to their policing, because you know, a meter reader, maybe certainly all staff need to understand is these concepts, but there's more risk for the officers who are like the people in harm's way, whereas other staff are going to be less so. So trying to do a, um, which is what our newer um, council member, Kevin, is trying to do. Um, of have all the, Kevin Stokes is recommending that all village staff do this same training, and I don't know where that is. Maybe Judith has an update on that. But in any case, that is not Coming quite, soon, yeah, not quite so helpful for the officers. However, if you turn to page five, and then the last page attached to this document, the collaborative, um, the Ohio Collaborative has come up with a great, at least it's a really much better than what exists, um, bias-free policing policy. And now we're in the collaborative, we belong to this collaborative, and we're also trying to get um, credited, which means getting some funding, which means we're going through an audit, the police department's going through an audit. And that audit includes looking at all the uh, policies, which will include this policy. And the main thing about this policy, this relates to our data group, that it, it, it requires collection of all data on self-initiated traffic contacts to include at a minimum the race and gender of the driver of the vehicle stop, and uh, you know, all those kinds of things. However, it's not required to occur until the year 2020. And then at the bottom is a whole bunch of uh, points about uh, policy and practice the, and things that are then shared with the public. So it's a good direction for bias, for understanding bias and, and tracking it and making sure the public sees these reports. Um, so again, it's not required until 2020, but it's a whole list of things that they could and should do, maybe. Um, and then at the bottom of page five, the one thing that we have not um, really paid much attention to because it's incredibly complex is drug control issues. And when I had a brief, my brief conversation with officers and I mean the sergeants and asked them to review all this, they're like, they did their usual, if it's against the law, we have to, you know, because I said, well, you know, somebody's got some paraphernalia in the car, no big deal. Well, if it's against the law, we have to. So that's still an issue I think that has to keep coming back in terms of that whole issue of officer discretion and no, we can't, we have to do, even if it's just one joint, we must. So that's not nothing that we've paid attention to or research, but it's still something of concern. Um, and then I think what's left for us in terms of both supporting bias issues and um, how to improve the relationship of the community with the officers, and they feel very at least the sergeants feel quite cynical about this. They said, you know, when they did police uh, coffee with the cop, the only guy who showed up for Sergeant Mapp was from Springfield. <laughs> so, um, you know, that the committee, the community doesn't necessarily. That's not true. Yeah, well, they were people. yeah, I did. I went, but you know, the people who show, the people who show up are not necessarily the people who are, don't feel good about officers. So. They, they feel like they've tried this and they've tried that, uh, ride-alongs and whatever, so they're kind of... But I think that we could, this is something we could do, we could meet with 365, we could meet with HRC, all the groups who have thought about this, and have ideas about it, and try to come up with yet another idea about it. So that's something I think our working group would take on, have a, have a shared meeting, you know, like in the spring, if we, if we have spring. <laughs> Any questions about this? Oh, the last thing is what to do with it. Do we want to give it to council? Do we want to, it's sort of a closure, like, okay, we're done with training, mostly. Um, can, you council, can, I, can I just say uh, the one thing I, I 
had a chance to talk to Chief last week, and I asked him about this. To me, it's the foundation of the kind of solution we want to see is de-escalation training. What's happening with de-escalation training? No, it's not happening for the Mexico. Um, and he said, um, he's trying to, you know, he had somebody who he felt was great, and there was a little bit of a problem, though it sounds like maybe he met with this, this same trainer recently, uh -huh. and so he may be a resource. But um, so just to say that's a, that to me is the centerpiece. And, and I told the chief I thought we should support him becoming a trainer in de-escalation training because he totally gets it. Yeah. He totally gets what it means. That's a great idea. And he said he appreciated it, and it sounds like now may not quite be the time he's got a lot of to play. <laughs> but at some point, I feel like we should think about him as our de-escalation trainer. Great idea. It's a great idea. But, but as far as the committee, I think um, uh -huh. we're sort of done. I mean, training comes up as a, as a question when there's a problem. Everybody's like, oh, they're not being trained. So this is sort of like, yeah, they're actually getting a lot of training. Um, and that our messages to the chief and to the department have been received and acted on. That we can forget about it, more or less. I mean, we can respond to support this or support that, but we're not going to, I don't see us as a police working group paying a lot more attention to training. It's also something that the outreach specialist is supposed to do. It was right. part of like when we exactly. interviewed them. Exactly. This was like, are, would you be comfortable with this? And you know, being informed about what type of training the citizens would like to ask. Yeah. So she will probably do. We hope. Yeah. The majority of it. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, I think we had talked this year, but one of our goals. Yeah. This is our goal. Mm -hmm. like okay. We we don't have to present it. We just yeah. put it. This whole thing. Yeah, I think it's is the Lexical training customized to Yellow Springs? Like, for example, the policing guidelines, or have those all been dumped into Lexical so they're Lexical getting trained is, on is our a, police it's actually guidelines? pretty good. Um, it's state specific, so it'll come up with Ohio State, and then you can adjust it. You can do your right. own adjusting. So, yeah. um, the extent to which I don't think we can, I don't think we have the time, energy to. To supervise that. I mean, we have to trust Carlson that he's do that. You know, he was overwhelmed with either no policies or very old, old policies or things that uh, Chief Hale brought in from Miami, uh, you know, the sheriff's office. I mean, he just had this mess, and so he's like, I don't have time to rewrite all these policies. And so this this vendor, this online vendor training, is actually well regarded. They, I'm familiar with Lex, okay. but right. there's two sergeants now. I never had sergeants when I was, okay. you know. So they've yeah, got right. personnel who can put the guidelines and, and our specific stuff into it, I feel. Yeah, yeah, and I think they are. I mean, that's what I've heard. They said they, I mean, that was one of, when he talked to the council about the uh, signing on of this vendor, that was one of the strengths that he put out there. We can do that. Mm -hmm. So let's hope they do it. Well, I think if we see an area of concern like the taser policy, we looked at that and we made an, an adjustment. I don't think generally things are being adjusted unless there's a reason to look at it. But the guidelines are kind of at the front of, I, I'm not sure what book, but they're, they're posting it in the department. They're going to put it in the, they're, they're in process of making it extremely visible as a guiding uh, document. But yeah, if there's an area of concern that we or, that we think we should look at, we, we may need to help with that. I don't know what the office the sergeants are doing. That. I think it would awesome to be awesome to have some scenarios like under our policing guidelines. How would you handle this situation? Just like oh. on the other, you know, yeah. right or wrong, you know, or suggest yeah. you know de-escalation. But you know, I mean, it seems so important. And yeah. we're training on everything else, and we're not training on our own unique policies. Okay, uh, moving along to the data group. Did you guys want to review data already? No. Okay, John, do you want to add anything more? Uh, sure. Um, so I talked to Ann Cordinga, and um, it seems that uh, the data set uh, that they have um, 
combined with the data set that we have, uh, which shed light on which cases went where, basically. Um, and so I guess, you know, if it's basically this recommendation isn't going to come back to, to this committee, so it's not really relevant. But I might work on that for a council, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, nothing new, really. Um, okay, nothing new about that. Okay, thank you. I, I, well, I do have. Um, Based on this analysis that we did and, and other things that we've done with the data sets that the police department has provided, uh, I want to raise a concern prospectively. So going forward, for example, with this recommendation that we passed around mayor's court, what's the process, uh, what's the audit trail? Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know why, I don't, I don't know who enters information from the paper ticket into an electronic database, um, but there are fields that are being left blank. And in this particular case about mayor's court, if we want to keep track of whether and how it's going, I mean, one thing is for the clerk of mayor's court to provide information about what's going on with mayor's court, but there's this bigger picture of what the police, who are sort of at the pointy end of the stick, they're making that choice about what to cite and where to send. And so um, I, I'm not sure who to ask or how to do it, but it does seem to me that there needs to be some tightening up or some conversation with the department about um, documentation, consistency of documentation, and a quality data record. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to add to that? Are they putting in the revised code or the ordinance provision that they're citing it under? Mm -hmm. I believe so, yes. yes. You can tell from that because if it's charged under the ORC, it's going to see you. So that's not necessarily the case in 1% of, according to their data set, um, of the cases that, were, that they say are going to mayor's court, 1% of them were cited under the ORC. And of the cases that they said were going to set to Fairborn Municipal Court, only 57 of them went there. But all 57 were cited under YS ordinances. It can't be, John, because Fairborn's going to say, we don't, that's not our jurisdiction. No. <laughs> we don't give. Okay. Two, two whistles about Yellow Springs ordinances. So but they can only have jurisdiction under if it's cited under the revised code. Okay. Well, well that's the data record more... that we have. What? Pardon me? That's the data record that we have that they're providing to us. So, so are you seeing blanks? Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm seeing 39% of the cases right. blank in terms of, in terms of the site, how they're citing it. Um, which court it is being assigned to. So now, this they is may think that's down, automatic, right. and you know enough that's what it sounds like. yeah. to be able to translate that. But so every case you have to have a, either an ORC or a YS yeah. ordinance? Yes, yeah. and, and I, I want to say more, more deeply here that um, I, I did ask. He knows this data set much better than I do. I did ask the, the sergeant that I, that I work with, Sergeant Knapp, um, what can be said about the case that the charges that um, where no court would, was uh, associated with, with the citation. And he said um, that in general, um, if it was cited under the, the um, ORC, then it was um, likely sent to uh, the municipal court. If it was cited under Wise Ordinance, it was probably cited to the mayor's court. However, he could not say, say for certain that that was the case. Now, I did clean the data set uh, using that assumption for all citations that where it didn't say exactly what court it was sent to. We could have presented that as like, yeah, this is like our best guess at what court. And then, and then it's very detailed about which case, which type of cases go where. I don't know. But if you there saw are a lot of inferences for that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously oh, right. based on an inference. If you want to see that, if anyone wants to see that, I can show that them to it. But I, we didn't feel comfortable bringing that here because we weren't sure that it was accurate. So what I'm hearing is that going forward, you want to see something more complete. And, yes. Yes. And that could happen in a conversation with the department. This is another place where I think 
uh, it's worth asking, uh, you know, for, I think it could come from council saying, you know, we're going to give a report on this. Yeah, we would like this data from the police department, you know, chief comes to our meetings, we could ask him to make sure that's on their stuff. And then Ann is, and, and then Ann is also going to be helping us with this because she's going to also, she's talking to Green County Municipal and I don't get where Fairborn's coming in. I guess so some, I mean, it's part of Green County, so I don't quite get that. But anyway, <clears throat> and then we're trying to get real, I asked her, is there any way we can get real detail about like what's the, what do you call it, the results? I mean, what's the, so there's the, um, what is the, the citation for? What is the, you know, punishment or whatever? And um, so that we know, because, you know, for the group disparate impact on the core group, um, we need, we want to understand, you know, the, the, the level of fines and so on, so we can understand the impact these are having. Okay. So, so I think we should ask, if we can be real specific about what we want, you know, I can bring that at a report to council, and then, you know, Chief, I'm sure, will be happy to ask that from his officers. Yeah. I've said many times that I, I think a great uh, deficiency in this group is that we, we never have any police officer here. I've heard four or five people say, oh, I met with such and such an officer. If there were, if, if for a part, not the whole meeting, but if for a part of the meeting, there could be someone here, they could maybe address some of these things in a very, and, and at least they would know the, that that they were involved in the process. That's, but I mean, I, I think it's a very, very uh, That's uh, optimum, and we can keep bringing it up. I did bring it up even with the sergeants, and I mean, right now they feel three shifts, three shifts. Very hard to, I mean, they don't feel like they have extra time, but it would certainly make a difference um, because sometimes they're saying, well, you know, you were wrong or you didn't know this or you didn't know that. And it's like, well, if you were here, we would, you know, we would have known it. Laura, say something else. So I, I stopped carrying it around with me, but that is the $60 report I paid for that, that gave me all the, all the YSPD cases that went to the senior municipal court from January 1, 2017 through August 2017. And that's what they charged me. And that's really the best way to get what you're asking for because it tells you what the disposition was and what the fines were and or the yeah. jail or the probation. So it tells you what happened. So Anne, I mean, we should be able to get this. Well, if government to government asks, if the mayor's, if Anne will do an official public records request from, from the government, then I don't think they're going to charge you. But if a citizen shows up, they charge you a lot of money for that. So that's what you want to get hold of. And that's going to tell you what went. You can compare it to what you guys have and what actually landed in Xenia. And you, you can do the same there. That is, that's what you need. Are we clear on what has to happen? I'll, I'll get it clearly. Yeah. So we run a report for all YSPD cases that came into the meeting. Yeah, and that's what Ian's going to do for us. Okay, great. Okay, let's um, move on then to sort of talk about disparate impact on the floor. Judith, Hal, and Kate are working on that. And John. And John. No, no, I'm not. Not the other John. John. There's more than one John. There's two Johns. Let's never get them all. No, sorry. Vance. Initials, initials. Where do you pee? Uh, who wants to report from that group? Uh, I'm supposed to. Okay. Um, I'm supposed to be helped if I get a bag. We have met, I believe, twice since then. And John is on our subcommittee now. We are trying to um, come up with a description of the problem. Yeah, I think that's where we're at this point. I'm going to come up with like a bulletin point. Uh, we're going to try to keep it, I think two pages is long enough, but I think we said two to four, just to address, you know, the overall problem of the impact on the floor. That's where we're at at this point. Okay. And Al is in the group, too. I didn't name everybody, but I don't think that. If you guys want to add anything to that. No? Okay. Um, basically, we've been looking at data and finding that there's a definite uh, gap 
between the median income of incarcerated people as opposed to non-incarcerated people, and uh, it's consistent across sex and racial demographics. Uh, this is in Yellow Springs? No, this is on the national level. Yeah, this is we're oh. looking at the We're doing the national level then. Oh, okay. so, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was and, uh, I didn't know that meant. Well, we've also just been looking at what some other municipalities have been doing in lieu of bail, or alternatives to bail. And one thing that I thought that came out pretty amazing in this is that when they've used the alternative to bails, the percentage of people who actually show up to court is 88 percent in some of these municipalities which is probably pretty consistent with the people who pay the bail and uh, so uh, there, there could be I think we should look at different alternatives to bail and, uh, and then uh, the other I was just looking at uh, this is a different committee but did we look, I just looked up a, a little bit of data on mayor's courts and just some things that we might want to watch out for because you know how, especially in Ohio, we have the speed trap uh, where people are having uh, like more than double the population of tickets annually. And, and, and we don't want to, I don't think we're close to anything like that, but that's something we want to be really careful with. Yeah, I, I could just say, um, the, um, yeah, the John brought this, John Booth brought this uh, thing about, you know, people now we're talking about incarceration incomes, and it's shocking, really. Well, I guess it's not shocking, but people who are in prison are poor. That's all. They're all poor. Who knew? I mean, no, they're all poor. It's, it's totally an incarceration of, poor, of poverty, it truly is. And just to say, if anybody's interested, the ACLU has this particular report for the state of Ohio. And they, um, in it, they, um, they've written letters to, this was put out in 2013, I think. Uh, it's not brand new. Um, but they've added a little bit online to this report uh, more recently. And they tell some personal stories of the people who are being, getting into this cycle of not, you know, it's, it's a terrible thing, really. But uh, one of the, they sent letters to like five or six uh, courts in the state where they were incarcerating people because they couldn't pay their, their fines. And one of them was the mayor's court of Springboro. And they basically threatened them that if they didn't change their actions. So I thought that was interesting because Springboro is not that far away from here. Mm -hmm. And they're actually, the mayor evidently has been sending people to prison, uh, to, not prison, right, jail. Yeah. Um, for not being able to pay their fines. So, so that was pretty interesting. And But the other thing I wanted to say to Al's point is that I've asked the chief if um, we talked about in our committee about going to, their net, uh, to, as soon as possible, a staff meeting of the police department. And Kate and I are going to go, and we wanted to ask you if you wanted to come with us. John's got to work during the day, so he can't make it. But because um, we want to, um, basically we want to, ask for if there's a police officer who would work with us to identify, to really work with us, to really look at this problem of the criminalization of poverty. And to me, it's, um, and Chief said, like, well, I can't make it to the meeting. I was like, no, we don't want you. <laughs> we want one of the other officers. Because um, my thought is the kind of conversations would, that would really be useful and help, you know, connect us with our police department is to look at some of the problems in the justice system. And if we all feel like we're on the same side, if we want to end those problems, us with our police officers who often come into the field wanting to help people and often in their training, that you know, they see these problems, but they probably don't think they can do anything about them. But, you know, if we're all on the same side of wanting to solve this the terrible criminalization of poverty. And here in the village, you know, I don't know how, you know, it's not so much the people who go to the mayor's court, it's really potentially people who, you know, we know it affects people who end up in jail because they can't pay their bail or whatever. We know that happens to people who are charged out of our community. So, you know, if we can all be on the same side, to me that is a way of trying to build a stronger bond with our police department when they are on our side of wanting to solve these problems. I think that's the kind of conversations that could be really helpful. 
So we are asking for that help. Uh, okay. And she was very open to it. Um, okay, anything else from the group? Sounds like you're off to a big start. Um, okay, the surveillance issues group, Ellis, um, Steve. Steve, do you want to give the report or should I do it? Uh, or we can make build it. Yeah, we're at war. I mean, yeah, we can feed up each other. You want to go first? Oh, no, do you have one of you? We had a nice meeting at the at the Emporium a couple of Saturdays ago, and one thing I learned is that Steve's son is very patient. <laughs> uh, and if you remember at the last meeting when we brought up, you know, the ideas that we were going to be working with, we talked about this idea of having making a proposal to council that they adopt an ordinance that says, you know, if you want to adopt any of these surveillance um, technologies, you got to get our approval. And uh, we're we're working on that basically. We have a who's model. Approval? What who's approval? You got to get our approval. The approval, approval of council. Oh, council. Yeah. And so we have a model ordinance, and the three of us are going to be editing it. And hopefully by the end of the month, we'll put our heads together and we'll come up with a draft that we can bring into this group. All right. And if you go over it, I, some great ideas in here. Uh, just like you know, uh, bringing up yearly reviews of what it is. A citizens review of certain things um, involving surveillance um, and also if anything is new or anything needs to be added how much it costs um, all of it would need to go through it's, it's very detailed um, and it seems like most of it would uh, like this almost could be sort of just sent in there's maybe two things in here that were sort of not really pertaining to the village, but beyond that, it was just like, yeah, that'd be great. Like if, like uh, yeah. So, but do you see um, it's just some kind of uh, figure, I mean, will you have some list of what they already do? I mean, what, do you, have, you already know that? So, yeah, right, you met with yeah. the chief. And well, so I, I asked the chief, and I basically gave him the, the definition of surveillance that is in this model ordinance, and I said, you do any of this stuff? And the one thing they do is they have an automatic license plate reader, uh, which they quit using because they decide not to update the software. They just don't like it that much. Um, they have. So they won't have something that can identify when by the license plate. Yeah, he's, he's, he says they're not going to use it. So, but they own it and they've used it in the past. Uh, the second thing is that they're uh, in the process of purchasing these body cams, uh, and he is totally open to collaborating with. Our committee on writing a policy for their uh, and so I didn't ask him. The one thing I did ask him is whether he wants to go first with the proposed policy that we would then work on, or whether he wants us to generate something that he would then work on. That's what we were discussing. Bill believes. <laughs> Bill believes as previous officer that it should be on the chief to have that policy that we would then look over. Um, we were sort of. And like, you know, hey, if we need to get the ball rolling, and, you know, because he's really busy at the moment, I, I don't mind that we sort of let him know, hey, this, you know, of course, as we believe this would be the best policy for you guys if we're going to have a, a body cam. Since it sounds like that's a definite, which is, uh, I think, great. Um, there's also this interesting what is out there, what yeah. they do yeah. have. This was really interesting, the ACLU. Turns out there's some really interesting technology they have. Uh, however, with this in place, nothing could be just added without the approval of council. So, um, yeah, I think we should. Well, yeah. So we're going to go over this and find two. <laughs> so hopefully by next meeting we might have something for people to look Correct, at. Correct. That's the point. Uh, for those people that are concerned that the new lights downtown have surveillance technology, <laughs> they do not, at least according to the chief. Or at least not that he knows. <laughs> but the technology is there. You can read all of the different things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how about drones? Do we have any of those? We don't have any. 
don't have any drones. No, there's no drones. We don't have any X-ray vans. We don't. <laughs> we don't do the thing where you bounce your cell phone. To Correct. Or heat signatures to see who's in the yeah. house. Okay. Not yet. All right. types. It's really. It's just they. And before they would, we tap your phone, tap your wallet. It's all types of stuff. It costs a lot of money. So. Does this policy just cover the police doing surveillance? Does it also cover citizens doing surveillance? The the proposal that we're working on is strictly. Uh, addressed to the cops. Correct. Yeah. Because yeah. that's another issue in cities, is citizens doing surveillance mm -hmm. on other cities. <laughs> that's a whole other issue. <laughs> 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 completely different yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right, uh, great. I knew you were going to say that one. Well, some good Justice system test for something. Let's move to new business. We have had a hard-working leadership group. <laughs> Basically, it's been Judith, Ellis, and I trading off uh, various tasks of trying to keep us together. Um, so we're changing that. We're at a place of um, changing that. Judith is going to talk about that and propose what we're, how we're going to go forward. Well, so we wanted to make a recommendation. So yeah, um, Pat and I both, yeah, <laughs> we've done our bit of this piece of it. We're going to stay involved in the committee. But, um, but uh, so uh, we have a couple of recommendations. Uh, we wanted to recommend that um, Ellis become the permanent chair. Um, he would just chair, he has, uh, but he wants a backup person. And we were going to recommend that Stephen Queen be the backup chair. And if both of them miss, are missing, are out of town for a meeting, then, um, and then while well, Al's doing, He's doing being a great, uh, doing great minutes, and we wondered if. Now I talked to Beth, and uh, if Beth and Al can help get the packets together, they can maybe work together on that. But obviously, if there's any last-minute things that like, so they would be the contact people for if you have something you want to add to the agenda between the meetings, because we're always going to do agenda planning at the end of the meeting. Um, but sometimes things happen, as we know. And so then sometimes it needs some adjustments. So I would hope, you know, Ellis could be kind of, there could be, I don't know, if you want to be a part of this, Steve, but at least Ellis, Al, and uh, Beth, if there's, any, if there's any need to talk or. I'm sure have, there's a need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if there's anything to talk about, but you guys can kind of figure that out. You and yeah. Al, if you would work on that sure. together and getting the packet out. So that means. And the calendar that I it, brought up earlier. The paper. Yes, uh, yeah. exactly. Yeah. The Thursday before the Monday. Yeah, the Thursday. Thursday, the Thursday the of the Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> yes. So that would be yeah. it. And then yeah. the expectation yeah. is if there is yeah. any yeah. Yeah. discussion at a committee meeting that of any substance that there, uh, where the, any decision making is happening, that it needs to be in the packet ahead of time so people have time to do the preparatory reading and thinking about it. So no last minute handing it out here if it's a, unless there's some unusual, I mean, the committee could decide, oh, okay, we'll allow that because it's a simple thing, but if it's anything more substantial, we don't want to be making decisions that way. Anyway. Um, so that's the, is that everything? That's everything. Okay, so let's move to our agenda plan. Wait, wait, wait. No. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to recommend, so is that okay with everybody? I think we so I think go ahead, John. Okay. Uh, Speak loud enough for the old people. Just thinking of how I'm going to structure this. All right. So, first of all, just to start off, uh, quite coincidentally, um, what the leadership committee is uh, recommending here is uh, they struck upon something that <clears throat> I've written out about just for my own enjoyment about how uh, the leadership for deliberative bodies, um, the, the leadership roles that pretty much break. Uh, there's a like really clear distinction pretty much between the role of like facilitating the meeting and putting the agenda together and, um, and the packet and, uh, and also being the voice for the committee out, sort of outside of committee meetings. Um, the facilitator being like a distinct role and the other things tending to fall together because if you want to get on the agenda, you need to contact the person that makes the agenda. And also sort of like setting up an agenda that uh, sort of has an idea about what the committee is going to do at its next meeting is like pretty similar to like telling other people at a council meeting, for example, what the committee has been doing. Um, 
I feel like implicit in what you're recommending here is that you will now is that there will now be a formal division between those two sets of responsibilities. Now, admittedly, we don't need to say that anyone is the default voice of the committee for in non-committee meetings. We could be like, no, just for every single situation, we will always just ad hoc this this person for this thing, this person for the next thing. I think it would be better for the person that's putting the agenda to just be the default person, and then for sure for any. You know, for each recommendation, it's best if the person, if the committee that's making the recommendation presents it to council. You know, for each thing, if we see a better reason for why it should be this person, then like, and that they're the best person to, to present it for sure, like let them be that person. But I think that it's better just to make sure that things don't fall through the cracks. That if no one else has been assigned to do something, like we have a default voice for the committee, and I think it makes sense for that that person that plays that role to be the same person. It's the person you contact to get onto the agenda. That, does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Um, so I feel like basically there's 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 that structure in question, and then the committee really should take a vote on its officers, right? So so we should have two separate questions. One is who's the facilitator and backup backup facilitator, and then well, I think we're and saying who's going to be the excuse me. I mean, you can you can afford a slate, and I guess if nobody moves to divide it, then John, I think that, that um, we already. I mean, we put out as part of this. Uh, reorganizing. Actually, oh. Ellis is the facilitator. In other words, he but we didn't take a vote on that. Sorry? Well, we're recommending it. Uh, it's a recommendation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That he would be the facilitator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got you. You got okay. But but you didn't. You were moving on to the next agenda, and we hadn't taken a vote on your recommendation. Oh. Or yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> one thing. One thing I like to say is what John brings up with the inmate, and, and Pat has done a great job at at, at uh, representing us. And I mean, so that would make it bad. But I, I think if, if there's times Beth, you know, so TV. <laughs> yeah, you come. To yeah. <laughs> so Beth's happy to do that. That'd be great. But I also think Pat did a very great job. Of well, thank you. But being able to summarize <laughs> what we were doing. So I don't know. Thank you. And there's a danger in that, of course, is that, I mean, I still have people ask me uh, as if I were in charge of this whole committee. So you have to be careful if you just have one voice, I think. Whatever. So I don't know. Well, I guess the question is, does Beth, do you, so John was sort of recommending Beth play that role. Isn't that what you were recommending? Yes, I am recommending that Beth play that role if she feels because comfortable she, doing it. Because of the role if, you're, if you're comfortable. If you're putting the, the agenda <laughs> I, together, I think it would be ideal if you could also play that default spokesperson for the committee. But if you don't feel comfortable with that, then you know, we don't need to do it that way. Uh, the issue for me is I don't have a, a clear picture of what that is. So we have these working groups and working groups develop recommendations and go to council sometimes and stand up and talk a little bit and get questions. So in addition to that, uh, what, are, what are the things that happen that you need this default person who's creating an agenda to be doing? We, we're not creating an agenda. We're, we're going to create the agenda okay. at the end of every meeting. No, no. Well, but we can't because if somebody wants to get on the agenda between meetings, there needs to be a person so that's able to add to the agenda. Add to the agenda. Add add to the agenda. agenda. Yeah. That's a phone call. Okay. So this default representation. It's what Pat has done, and then I mean, yeah. probably on on a handful of occasions, she's given reports to councils and the main venue, and then occasionally some other group. I don't know if it, this has to be an appointed person, but you have sort of spoken as. The person yes. kind of, yes. speaks. On, on our yeah. on our contact sheet, for example, for each project, there is a contact person. But for Justice System Task Force, there is also a contact person, and currently that contact person is Pat DeWitt, <coughs> and she did agree to that. I didn't just put it there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess one thing I'd say one thing I'd say about this is I have a bit of discomfort because I'm new to this. Right. And I have really focused on data stuff, you know, so now I'm taking a, a larger view. But um, I'm really new to this, and there are a whole bunch of people here, who, other than Sean, who, who, who have been more immersed in this process for months and over years. So I'd be willing to be someone who needed to contact them, I and mean, that's still just 
okay. use the information from the people that I think the committees tend to have more information. But, um, but Pat, like I, I've seen what Pat does, and it's, it is sort of a summary to let other people know what's happening here. If that's what's needed, it needs to be okay. brought to council, things like that. I. Be more than willing to be the default voice. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank cool. you. So then, Absolutely. So we'll have, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll have basically three sort of leadership roles: right. facilitator, default voice, and agenda. Yeah. And, and our packaging. Better. And, and I have. Recording and by the way, I just. It's four people. Actually. Right. What? Because Al's taking. Oh, Al's and secretary, of course. Yes. Yeah. So can we just capture these these names? Roles and phone numbers somewhere so that if you have something that fits one of those things, you know who to give a, a ring to. Okay, and I currently have a contact sheet for the committee that's on Google Sheets that I've been trying. I just emailed Judy Kidder recently and she told me to follow up, check, make sure it's on the website. But it, I'm trying to get it so it's on, so that the page on yso.com is about the village, it's about JSTF, I mean. Um, has yeah. our contact sheet. That's yeah, helpful. Yeah. I just want to make sure all of us know best phone number so when you want to change the agenda, you call her and not right. <laughs> 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 Okay, can we, um, uh, this alone, because we have something else to do, can we, is there an agreement about this? Do we need to make a motion? People need to vote about it? Yeah. For each I don't don't think we need so. Well, we don't need to move each round if people don't want to. Sense sense of what's going on. I think we should be really Let's move on. Let's do a vote for, like, everyone. Yeah. Rather than each position. Yeah. Pat, do it. No, Pat, you do it. Okay. okay. We um, we are agreeing that the leadership team will be uh, starting next month. Uh, leadership team will consist of uh, Alice Jacobs and Alice Luger and Sophie Queen. As the default voice. Yes. Brandon. As the person who makes the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot that you forgot it was. Yeah, no, it's okay. I just said it's okay. I just said live brain. Yeah. I would like to second that. Sorry. Second. <laughs> Uh, agree? Does everyone agree? Vote? Yes. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Jack. That's passed. Okay, what we need to do before we adjourn, which we would like to do on time, is our agenda planning for our next meeting. I did have one other thing I had on. Well, you did. Which was this idea about public? I just want to say it because it's not as much to discuss, which is the idea of this public forum we talked about. That is actually one of our goals. Or our work you have an idea about what that I just, I think I said it before, but I wasn't sure. I didn't know, I didn't know if the group wanted to say, yes, let's think about doing that, and maybe have a special Which is what the is idea of, of that that you this mean? idea of disparate impacts on the poor. I mean, I would think it would happen maybe in the fall. Uh, we'd like to, we'd, you know, we so. take that as one possible topic? Okay, yep, that's fine. Thank fine. you. Because I think, I think our idea was to talk to 365 okay. and HRC okay. and have a bigger conversation about what that event would really focus on. We've talked about Mayor's Court because of all the changes. We've yeah. talked about several things. Okay. So, okay. so one forum on all or several forums on? Uh, well, several. we haven't even figured that out yet. It's just that just the, our charge included some better communication with the public than we've been able to do. So and is this going to come along after we finish? Or in the middle. Yeah, sort of the towards the end, right? The fall. Yeah. yeah for the fall. When we finish the task force meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so there, there is this, well, there is this idea that we will change to something else. That will change. <coughs> okay. Um, what do we want on our agenda next? We'll just. We'll just, group reports. Our group will just be recording again. Yeah. So it seems like the mayor's court group yeah. would Public want defender. a discussion of recommendation numbers two and three. I'll tell you what, I'll remember them. I'll make what is three, which is the PD number two, and I'll, I'll put number two on the on the diver recommending a diversion and restorative justice program. And then I'm going to send, I would like to work on and send number four, because that was our work plan for 2018, was four recommendations. I want to get it off my plate and onto 
Well, so I think it, it's hard to do more than terms of it. But well, you can just put them, just keep rolling them from future agendas onto the agenda. You know, like council does, they have at the bottom future agenda items. Yeah. Just keep so roll, that's what rolling will be it. Two, which will be but I'm probably going to send it so everybody can read it. Yeah. And forget what it's for. And make sure it gets into the packet. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that would be the front end of the agenda. Um, what other, there other items that we, well, we want John was to, um, would you be bringing it up or would it be folded into their, the discussion of their recommendation? Public defender. Comments. Yes, so it sounds like they are, they're bringing it to the next meeting anyway, and I was just asking, if, since we actually can't discuss both recommendations simultaneously, that we discuss the public defender one first, and then we try to, Act on it, you know, quickly. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. What else um, would we want on the agenda next week, next month? Mm -hmm. Working group reports. Working group reports. And that would include a draft policy related to surveillance. Is that accurate? I hope so. Yeah. Right. Which group was talking about this system review? Yeah, I was. Yeah, it was. Who's discussing that? The system review for the new sacred. There's a group that's already committed to that. Is there anyone that's to a point of the agenda was? Or, I know people are doing research on it, so. Yeah. I just want to know which group. Well, the work, the last working group is looking into. Okay. What a. What a long-term permanent police advisor group would look like, and it includes that, those issues. Gotcha. Yeah, and there be, yeah, there may be some way to talk more about that. Yeah. Is there any it's really priority hard city? Because the big, it's the big cities that have that in place. Have, well, we've already been. To, um, Bill and I went to Dayton and heard all about it there, but you know, we don't have that kind of resources. Is there any prioritization of the different things that are working on? Sorry? Is there any prioritization that's been done of the various things that the working groups are working on? I think that would be helpful. Well, we just completed goal one, training overview. It's done. Yeah. Good so for it's you. Done. Great job. <laughs> so, right. And the next one is, and we're, we've already started it, so we'll keep going on it. So are you so suggesting that as an agenda item that we talk about the priorities? I think it would be appropriate to have three or four, a half a dozen, it's too many, but you know, prioritize some things to be working on them. Okay. We're getting a lot of, we need a citizen review board comments from people, and I think that that's a significant thing to, to consider, and there are other things we're working on, we can't do everything. Right. But we should have some prioritization so that we're not getting a little bit of everything all the time and making a little progress. So are you saying each working group prioritizes or the whole the task force? I mean, even if we just made a list of what everybody's working on and then pick three of them. When you get done with those three, pick the next three. Well, each group would be deciding. The task force needs to decide, in my opinion, what important things are. Um, uh, we, are, are we, have we don't have that process. I know. I'm yeah. suggesting we consider it. With it. And, and so, yes, Beth, if we're on the agenda. We can talk, I guess we can talk about yeah. it. You're saying mind. because we're getting the Citizen Review Board comments a lot, we should, that, that we should, there should I'm using it as an example. I think that we're, you know, we're talking about what, maybe a dozen different things to work on. There's some, I mean, John's point is well taken. A public defender is an important thing to have. We should work on that sooner rather than, you know, trying to write a policy for buddy camps we don't have yet. Uh, so, you know, as a task force, there are a bunch of things we're working on. We should have some prioritization of those things and work so on the more important things first. You'll have to talk with each subgroup too, then, right? To get that, because we have, have a sub bunch of things. Yeah, I would hope that each subgroup could say, we're working on these four things, five things, 20 things, and list them all. Mm -hmm. And then if each subgroup list said those, then we would have a list of however many of the total well, we do have task force is working on. And then okay. look at that total list and do prioritization of that. So it, that makes sense. So it does make sense to me uh, to talk about priorities with the whole group, and it also makes sense to me that working groups might 
especially if they have a long list, come with some suggestions about which uh, they right. think are more important. Yeah. Um, and that at least helps us sort through what could be, you know, if there are 40 items, then. Right. Yeah. And some things take longer than other things. Sure. Yeah. So even if they put it at the top, they might yeah. not. Okay, so our agenda so far would be that we will have a uh, discussion, considerable discussion about the next recommendation coming forward out of the mayor's court group. And that, um, the materials supporting that will be put in the packet and it also would be distributed earlier than that if possible that people could read it and read about it. Then we would um, have a prioritizing discussion. Process, and then we have working group um, So, my sense from the mayor's group, um, court working group, is that they <coughs> do want to bring both recommendations. And I'm not saying that they should not bring both. Right, and I, well, did I, I get it? No, I think it's a good idea. We should just bring one. We should bring the public defender. Mm -hmm. it, you don't well, have time. The working group can discuss oh, okay. if they're That's bringing, but they're bringing us something. And they'll all right, give okay. us a second. Okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure that that was a me too. Like you guys okay, are there any there. other items that need to be on the agenda for next time? Uh, yes. I have a question. What subgroup, if any, is charged with the responsibility of evaluating the uh, Citizens Review Committee? Is that on any? That's the police working group, right? Okay, and who is on that subgroup? Bill Randolph, who's not here tonight, and uh, me, and um, Kate. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I would like to introduce Rebecca Mark, who's been sitting here very oh, quietly. <laughs> uh, Rebecca is an Antioch, was an Antioch student. She's a nurse. She was on the uh, EMT squad. Yeah. She's had a lot of yeah. experience in, in justice-related things, and she is interested in, in participating with the task force. Yeah, well, just, yeah, also just a quick comment. I've been really, really impressed with this group. I explained to Judith that Yellow Springs is my bedroom community. Um, it has been my bedroom community for a long, long time. I've taken very little interest in local matters. I'm happy with representative government because then I don't have to be bothered. But lately, I've become a little bit more interested in local okay. affairs. And I thought this might be a good introduction to come to the meetings. And I've just been really impressed with all of you. Well, thank you. Well, and just to say, Rebecca is uh, offering to be part of a working group. So yeah, you've uh, heard uh, if you've got an agenda, uh, and so I don't know if there's any groups that you would like to start participating, yes. but they meet in between meetings. Yeah. So. Just a, a side note, I'm a registered nurse, but I've had a lot of experience working in law offices. I consider myself really, really good at research, and I consider myself fairly good at writing and And your phone number is. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure, no, and, um, and I'm also a great gopher, too. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do the heavy lifting. Thanks, Rebecca. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah. oh uh, I have a home phone number, but use my cell. 974 362. And Rebecca Mark, M A R K. I'm also in the red book, but that's my home number. Well, thank you. Oh, I'm headed. Yeah, perfect. So, here it goes. Okay, yes. What is it? Nothing, I'll just edit it. Oh, editing the, sorry. We are on YouTube. Right, that's so right. Does everybody know that we're on YouTube? Does everybody know that? Back of Ellis' head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but seriously. We fight for this. So, uh, we need a motion to adjourn. Well, could, could I first suggest that we sure. give a vote of thanks for Pat, for all the work yeah. you've done. She's really yeah. done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to announce it's John's birthday today. Oh, happy birthday! Oh, Shall we sing? Would you sing it? Don't push it. Where's the cake? I have a lighter. Yeah. We have not adjourned. Would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor?